Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're connected. Happy new month. This is our month of completion, completion of great and mighty things. The project we've started from the beginning of January to June and we've not completed. The, ne the next six months of this year, 2020, the Lord Almighty will empower us to finish it in the name of Jesus. This month of June, everything that is spending in our lives, the Lord is going to perfect it in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I thank you. I give you glory. Give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is listening to you. Holy Spirit, less of me, more of you. Please have your way. Do what only you can do. Teach us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. It's good to see you again. And I know that the Lord Almighty will continually help us in the name of Jesus. So today, I have a word from the Lord to you. And uh, the title is Danger of Spiritual Blindness. The Danger of Spiritual Blindness. When we say uh, I'm sorry, danger of spiritual deafness. So definitely the next teaching is going to be maybe spiritual blindness. But we're talking about deafness now. Danger of spiritual deafness. What does it mean to be deaf? Deafness, you know, there's partial deafness and there's full deafness. But we're talking about now, we're looking at the spiritual aspect of it. So deafness is when somebody cannot hear. Now let's go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy 29. This is not going to be a very long teaching, and that's what's going to be happening in this month of, of July. It's not going to be quite long. It's just, you know, just to encourage ourselves, to edify ourselves. Deuteronomy 29, Deuteronomy 29 from verse 1 to 4. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Oreb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto all his land the great temptation which thy eyes have seen the signs and those great miracles verse 4 yet the Lord had not given you an heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear until this day in this Bible passage Obviously, the things that the Lord has done for them are visible things. The Lord, they, opened, they, they saw with their eyes where there was a plague in the land of Egypt. They saw with their eyes how Pharaoh was drowned. And then they were able to see everything, the mighty things that God, the Lord Almighty used, you know, used uh, uh, Moses and, uh, and uh, Aaron and Joshua. You know, they were able to witness the things that the Lord had chosen to, to do the work of deliverance for them so they were able to see that ah, there's a rod in Moses hand that turned into a serpent there's a rod that parted the rod. they were able to see it and unto all the land they were able to see how the enemy was afraid of them how they fought and the Lord gave them victory they were able to see but yet do you know despite the sin they didn't understand because why the Lord had not given them a, an heart that means the heart speak the heart can perceive but we're focusing on the eyes today. Next, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the heart. So, in that Bible passage, they were not able to see until a particular time. Now, let's quickly now go to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. We're going to quickly read from verse 8 to 11. Isaiah chapter 10 from verse 8 to 11. Isaiah chapter 10 from verse 8 to 11. I beg your pardon. Is Isaiah chapter. Sorry about that. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 from 8 to. Let's read from verse 8 to 11. Yeah. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then if you read further, then the man of God said, then, then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted. So there's a specific time that the people will not be able to understand anything until a specific time. As now, we all know that in this particular time, when you tell somebody Jesus is coming back, they don't understand what you are saying. 
So don't get upset with them and don't come and do by fire, by force. You must hear the word of God. Sometimes they don't understand what you're saying. Though they are not deaf, they don't understand. So let's not go to uh, our Bible focus this, uh, this moment that the Lord has given us. And that is in the book of Mark chapter 5. So we're able to understand, you know, you're able to understand certain things about deafness. That deafness does not mean that you are spiritually, you are not, you can't hear physically. But deafness goes beyond that. It goes beyond hearing. He's talking about spiritual deafness. So let's go to Mark chapter 5 verse 25. Mark chapter 5. We all know the story, but we're going to read it for us to be able to understand this story. Mark chapter 5. We're going to be reading from verse, let's read from verse, um, verse 25 and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse when she heard we're going to stop there when she heard of jesus this woman is, is not she's not she's not deaf but her spiritual ears became alert her spiritual ears became opened when she heard of Jesus, she heard of Jesus. The information she heard was beyond the physical. It 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 went beyond I heard or I see. You know, in the old land of Israel, there's something that everybody knew. Our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Everybody knew that. Everybody knew that Jesus, oh Jesus, there's something unique about him. But this woman saw beyond the hearing. She heard further. So she heard. So because she heard, what happened? The, the hearing led to her knowing about Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So the hearing that she heard that Jesus Christ was around, what happened? She knew beyond the ordinary. She understood in the spirit that she has to rise. She knew that she had to rise. That's why the Bible says that what happened in that mark. Let's go back to that mark. She heard. Then she came in the press behind. So she understood that it is time for her to rise. Because why? The glory of God was around. And what is the glory of God? If you go to the book of, of, of Exodus, when the Lord Almighty wanted to reveal himself to the Israelites, to everybody, it was the glory of God that descended on the mount. That the people said, ah, we don't want to see the Lord Almighty. So the glory of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. Is the presence of the Lord. So she knew that Jesus Christ is God's is glory, is the glory himself. So what did she do? She rose. A light has come because why sickness is darkness. Arise and shine for the light is come. The darkness that has been operating in your life, it has to be subdued. The Bible says... He is the light and darkness cannot comprehend. When there is darkness, the moment you turn on the light, the darkness disappears. So she knew that that darkness of sickness in her life has to disappear. Because why? A light has come and the glory is around. The glory of God is risen upon the years, is around. Number two, a hearing made her to do the extraordinary. Because her spiritual ears made her know that Jesus was not ordinary. Though it looked ordinary. So because her spiritual ears, when she heard of Jesus, when she realized, she knew, she heard about Jesus, she realized that this is more than an ordinary man. She realized that Jesus is more than what you see. That even though you see him walking on the streets, eating, sleeping, there is more to Jesus. If you go to the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 3. Matthew chapter 2 verse 3. Let's quickly read it. Matthew chapter 2 verse 3. The Bible says, let's start from verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, what did he do? He was troubled and all Jerusalem with him when the herd they had not even seen the baby but the herd because Herod's ears was more there was something he had in the spiritual that the devil told him that there's going to be danger there's going to be rival ah you know the devil is a proud spirit so he will tell him that there's somebody they say he starts reason this one is going to be a king 
So he had more than he could have just said, okay, baby, yeah, so what? Okay, you came, so what? There are a lot of babies, okay, even if he stars. But Herod knew beyond the ordinary. He had certain things in the spirit. There are two spirits you either hear. You either hear the Holy Spirit or you hear the voice of the enemy or your own voice. Three voices that speaks to us. The voice of the enemy, the voice of the Holy Spirit, and your own voice. So what happened? When, she, when he heard, he knew that there was something about the child. So this woman knew, she realized that there was more than the ordinary Jesus. What happened again? When she heard, she came in the press behind. Her open eyes made her to do the ridicu ridiculous thing. What did she do? In the press behind and touch his garment who does that that is there are a lot of people in the crowd there are a lot of people in the crowd because if you read further for she said if i may touch by his clothes i shall be made oh so she said she looked at it and i must do the ridiculous thing what's that you know most things that moves god they are always something that looks unwise the bible says in the book of first corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 the Bible says God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. So things that you don't count as anything is what the Lord will use and say, this is what I want to use. This is the one that has been abandoned is what I want to use. So she, she they, because her spiritual ears was opened in a positive way, what did she do? She moved and said, let me just touch his garment. Every other person will be like, let me, let me carry, let, let, Jesus must see me. He must see me. Oh, Jesus, come to my house. Oh, Jesus, please. I just need your touch. She said, you know what? Let me touch his garment. Nobody had done it before her time. Let me, if only I could touch his garment. So what happened? Who touches and feels something? You know, that, that, you, you, you want to, uh, everything you want to do, like sometimes, in, in most cases, everybody wants to say a man of God. I want to say a man of God. But we've not sat down, or I want to say a man of God. You've not sat down to do the ridiculous. In the ministry, to the glory of God, the Holy Spirit does not touch anybody. The Lord does his own. Isn't it? It doesn't look ridiculous. You are in another nation. I'm in, my, in another nation. And the Holy Spirit moves, does deliverance, does healing without seeing each other. It looks ridiculous. That's how the Lord moves. He confers the, the foolish things of the world. To, to, to confront, he, he chooses the foolish things to confront the wise. Then what happened to her? She testified. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. Turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude, trundling thee and saying thou, who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what she was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and the all of thy plague. You need a word from the Lord. You need a, a, a confirmation of healing, of go. The Bible says he sent forth his word and delivered us from all his affliction. And what is his word? The word of God that we're reading right now. We don't need to see Jesus Christ come into your room physically. But his word, what, what does the word say about your situation? In this month of July, it's very, very important for our ears to be opened. When your ears open, it makes you to flee from danger. It makes you to, to avoid danger. We all know the story of this man called Balaam in the book of, of Numbers, he was sent on an errand. The Lord didn't tell him to go to start with. And then eventually out of covetousness, he followed. And guess what? Let's quickly read it. And because I don't know, well, covetousness, that's what covetousness can do to anybody. His own was just like, I must, I must, these things that the king has brought, what happened? I must, I must get it. Let's quickly go to uh, um, Numbers 22, Numbers 22. Verse 22. So we all know the genesis of it is a man called Balak and Balaam. Balak is the king. He saw the Israelites and he was afraid. So he told this prophet to come and curse them because he knows that whatever the prophet does is, is you know, like, that is, God backs it up. And then the Lord told him initially that don't go there. But because of covetousness, the Lord now made him to hear what he wanted to hear. Because if you read Numbers 22, let's read 
um, verse 7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spoke unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lord, hear this night, and I'll bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me. And by verse 9 says, And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me then. Paraventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people for they are blessed. That is what the Lord said. That, you know, God does not talk too much. But because Balaam, his intention, his heart was not right. It, the gift that they brought, his eyes was already on it, covetousness. So what happened again? Then the Lord now made him to hear what he wanted to hear. In verse 20, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, thou shall do. The people did not come. Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his horse. So he was already moved by his own emotions, by covetousness. So what the Lord said, he just came through this way and came out through that way. So what happened? So when your ears are opened, what it will save you from danger if you are ready to listen you know there are some times that somebody can be talking to you and you're actually staring at them but you're not you, you're not listening you are looking at them but if they ask you what what did you say actually if you with children children can be disturbing and say mommy or daddy auntie and then you say mm -mm. if they ask you what you what they said now you'll be able to remember because we're not listening to them so ba balaam heard what the lord said but it came out from this ear spiritually it can happen to anybody God will speak here like this. You come out with this. You heard, but you didn't listen. The Bible says, once have I heard, twice. Once has God spoken. Once has God spoken. Twice have I heard. Once he spoke once. Twice. Your spiritual ears, both the physical and the spiritual must be at a lot. So what happened? And God's anger was kindled because he went. <coughs> And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a part of the vineyard, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went, went further and stood in a narrow place three times, where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. Oh God! When God wants to step into your situation, he will control animals. Okay? Everything belongs to the Lord Almighty. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou smit me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou mocked me. We are going to stop there. How can you hear the voice? I know there are some people that they have... They can hear the voice of animals. I don't, I've not, I don't hear voice of animals. Except the Holy Spirit opens my ears like the, the way he opened a Balaam. Balaam's ears was not open. He, the Lord, he was deaf. He had been deaf the moment he disobeyed God. So both his, his spiritual ear became deaf. Yet physical, he could hear. So immediately the Lord, out of his mercy, spoke. The, the donkey was open. What happened? He now told Balaam, why are you doing this to me? And Balaam could hear the donkey speak. Because at that particular time, the Lord opened the ears of Balaam. The question is right now is, how can you be a man or a woman whose ears are opened? That will be the next teaching by God's grace. We're going to be looking at what are the things that we can do to have spiritual ears. You see, in this brand new month of July, in fact, not even only because of this month, we need our ears to be sharp, to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because when you hear his voice and you obey him, you can never miss the way. So what do we do? We, one can be physically, uh, you can be physically, physically okay. That is, you are not deaf and yet be spiritually deaf. And you see somebody that is physically deaf, but they spiritually they are not deaf. 
So we're going to be looking at in the next teaching, what do we do to become a woman or a man who's, who's, who, is not, who is not spiritually deaf or who was deaf and can now have spiritual opening of the ears by God's grace in the next teaching. And I know that the Lord Almighty will help us and uh, help us that if, for instance, we've been hearing, we will not become deaf. And the Lord Almighty will help us that if paraventure we are deaf, the Lord will open our ears in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, Lord, King of kings, Lord of Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the great and mighty things you've taught us today. Holy Spirit, please open our spiritual ears. For individuals that are deaf, Father, please open our ears. For those people that are they're not deaf, Father, Lord, let us not be deaf. In the name of Jesus, that as we hear your word, Lord, my Father, give us the grace to practicalize what we hear. In Jesus' name, amen. I cannot live without telling my brother and sister that is connected right now that you've never given your life to Jesus. The Lord is opening your spiritual ears right now to listen to what he has for you. He's knocking at the door of your heart, saying, come, let me come inside your heart. I've paid the price for you. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to pay any sacrifice. The blood of Jesus has redeemed us from the slave market of sin, from the prison of the enemy. Because if you're a sinner, you're a slave to the devil. Why don't you come to the Lord today and surrender all to Jesus? Saying these prayers after time, you say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, Satan, and your works in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that you said that prayer, I'm going to pray with you now. Everlasting Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your children that have given their life to you. Your word says, by no means will you cast out anyone that comes to you. The sustaining grace will finish the race. Well, Father, let it rest on each one of us. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Congratulations, my brother, my sister. God bless you for saying that prayers. As you said it, you can send me a message. I'm going to leave my information on the on the page so you are able to send me an email and i'll send you materials that would help you to grow the lord be with you shine his face upon you and the lord almighty will make us to finish the race well because why jesus christ is coming very soon so we'll be back next week and don't forget to the glory of god the lord has expanded the ministry we are on tv now we're on faith world tv uh, on sky channel um every sunday 7 a.m to 7 30 a.m uk time every sunday till jesus christ returns or until the holy spirit tells me to stop and uh, if you don't have sky if you're in africa there is a legend tv where you can watch it otherwise you can actually go on google app download faith world tv and then you can watch a lot of programs on uh, christian based and then you can connect with foundation on a solid rock ministry on every sunday 7 a.m to 7 30 a.m uk time and i know that as you connect you're going to be blessed in the mighty name of jesus so i'll see you very soon with the part two of this teaching on how we can become spiritually at alert and not be deaf and paraventure somebody is deaf the lord almighty will open our ears in the name of jesus once again happy new month don't forget to follow us on facebook also foundation on a solid rock ministry matthew 7 verse 25 and you'll be blessed as you do God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Let's share the grace and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Before you finish this uh, video, before you go, make sure you subscribe. God bless you. And share. Shalom.